Today's review is sponsored by the North American Institute of Ape Vagoda Impersonators, because every gathering needs an Ape Vagoda. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. What do you get when you mix Predator, Robocop, and Italian Exploitation together? A fun time with extra cheese. When watching Italian Exploitation, one common element that you're gonna come across quite a bit is ripoffs. I've said this before, back in the day, Italian production companies insisted that filmmakers make movies that were like popular American movies. So as a result, you had a lot of Italian remakes and unofficial sequels to American films. Lucio Fulci's Zombie, also known as Zombie 2, is probably the most notorious of these films, being made as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. But there were plenty of Italian ripoffs made, which brings us to Bruno Mattai. <laughs> Some people say Matai, some people say Matei, I say tomato tomato, or spaghetti spaghetti. I've said it Bruno Matai my entire life, and I'm too set in my ways to change it now. Bruno Matai made a fair amount of rip-off flicks. Hell of the Living Dead, Strike Commando, which was based off of the Rambo movies. He made the Italian Terminator 2 before James Cameron made the American Terminator 2. A ferocious... Indestructible. Ruthless Terminator. Of course, his Terminator 2 was a ripoff of Aliens with a Terminator coming in in the last act, and it was also called Shocking Dark. Who cares? We're having fun. Speaking of fun, Robo War. Come on! Or else I'll blow your balls off! The plot is very simple. It's just a low-budget B-movie version of Predator. But instead of following a group of badass soldiers fighting against an alien hunter, we're following a group of badass soldiers fighting against a robot that was meant to be used as a weapon, which is now malfunctioning and killing everything in its path. It's silly, it's cheesy, it's over-the-top, it's very entertaining. On target, on target, on target, on target, free shoot, free shoot, free shoot. Before we get to the good stuff, I do have to address one issue. There are a few scenes where people are just walking around the woods. It's a problem you come across in various B-movies. Drawn-out scenes of people just walking around or doing mundane tasks for the sake of padding out the runtime. You do have some of that in Robo War, but not a lot of it. There's still plenty of fun to be had in this flick. I just wish there were less walking scenes for the sake of padding. But now that that's out of the way, excessive cheesy action! The budget is low, but everything else is over the top. In here, the Dutch character is Murphy Black, and played by Rep Brown. He's always fun to watch. Every movie Rep Brown is in, he's having a good time and giving an enjoyable performance. And because he's having a good time, we're having a good time. Here's an example of what kind of flick you're getting into. Look at this moment from Predator. Yeah. Stick around. And here's a similar moment in Robo War. Ah. Don't move. He winks at the camera. That's where most of the entertainment comes from. How over-the-top things are, and how delightfully off everything is. We have this group of mercenaries who are supposed to be the best of the best, very skilled at what they do, but their way of handling every situation is shoot everything! Not just shoot, but hit everything with a barrage of bullets. There's one scene where these guys see a sniper up in the trees. Mind you, this is supposed to be a stealth mission. Here's how they handle the sniper. Yeah. 
I think you got him. Picture those two big action scenes from Predator, when they attack the enemy base and when they mow down the forest. That's how they handle everything in Robo War. True, Predator is the better movie, I absolutely love Predator, but Robo War has a blast, literally in some cases. <laughs> Then there's the Predator, I mean Robot. This is where the movie truly falls into the so bad it's good category. The robot looks like a guy in a costume. It's a good design, but it looks less like a cyborg and more like a guy in a homemade Power Rangers outfit. The first time we got a good look at him, I said, wow, it looks like you made that yourself. I love it. I kinda get a kick out of the Predator vision in this one. In the original Predator, you get it, the alien sees in infrared. In Robo War, the thermal vision is this orange tint with a bunch of pixels. In Predator, you could make out what the thing was looking at. In Robo War, there are scenes where you can't tell what you're supposed to be seeing. I think that's our heroes because something's moving. The robot doesn't have any mission. In Predator, it was simple. The alien was a hunter. He was looking for a challenge. So you understood the monster's motivation. In Robo War, the robot's just there to blow shit up, which I'm all for. One of my favorite things is the robot voice. Enemy sighted, moving target, dragon search, free scene. On target, on target, on target, fire, fire. Enemy sighted, on target, pre-seed. I love how he talks in that silly robot voice before he blows shit up. It adds to the cheesiness. It's hard for Italian ripoffs like this to have their own identity. There are some Italian ripoffs that are able to stand on their own. Zombie is a perfect example of this. However, for movies like Robo War, it's hard for them to have their own identity because they're so ingrained in the movies that inspired them. That's the sole reason they exist. But in a strange way, that doesn't hurt these movies. It's an endearing quality. And if anything, I think fans of the originals will get a kick out of these Italian ripoffs. It's interesting and fun to see how a different culture handles a popular story. If we can do it in America, they can do it in Italy. And on that note, it's time for the Grindhouse rankings. The body count is rather large, so it was hard to count. We'll just say it's somewhere between one and a million. The kills mostly consist of gunshots, but we do get a few stabbings and explosions as well. There's some good cheese in this flick. Many moments provide us with some fun schlock. Red Brown is entertaining as always. Whenever he's in a movie, he's having a good time, and because of that, we the audience are having a good time. There are some slow moments of people just walking around the woods, which can be boring, but luckily there aren't many of them. The action is over the top and fun, the killer robot is fun, and just like everything in this movie, it has that element of cheese. The costume is somewhat cheap, but it works. I think this movie can be especially entertaining for fans of the original Predator. It's fun to see a different schlocky version of a classic movie. I'm giving Robo War a 2.9 out of 5, but don't worry about the low rating. This fits perfectly in the So Bad It's Good category. It's a good cheesy time, particularly for Predator fans. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do here, or give it a thumbs down if you don't like what I do here. Leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite rip-off movies. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Oh god, a spider! I think we got it.